I'm Lillian Barraclo. And I'm Bonnie Gao. And we are high school students at Riverdale Collegiate Institute in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Today we are going to be interviewing the climate change scientist Steve and researcher Steve Easterbrook. Steve is a member of the Department of Computer Science at University of Toronto and he focuses most of his research on um, the contribution, contribution of computing and software to the challenge of dealing with climate change today. Steve is a member of the facili facility of the Center for the Environment and also the Center for Global Climate Change Science and also a member of the editorial board for geoscientific model development. So we now like to open Steve Easterbrook. Hi, I'm Steve Easterbrook, S-T-E-V-E, E-A-S-T-E-R-B-R-O-O-K. Yeah, I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Toronto. So I've spent the last seven years investigating how climate models uh, are built and how they're tested. And the, one of the biggest discoveries from that work is that climate models are uh, incredibly complex engineered uh, uh, software that's tested to a very high standard. Um, we've, we've looked at uh, climate models in comparison with commercial software and it's much higher software quality, many fewer errors in this software. The other thing that I've found in my work is that there's a huge gap between what the scientists who work with these models have found out using them and what the general public knows about climate change. And that I think is one of the, the biggest challenges we face is that, that knowledge gap that the, the results of the science aren't getting communicated clearly to people. I think there's two parts, um, uh, two, two issues that I worry about most. One is that very few people realize how long it takes to transition the world to cleaner sources of energy. That there's a, a, a huge amount of inertia in terms of all of the infrastructure that we rely on that, that's built using fossil fuels and how long it will take to replace that. So there's, there's a lack of urgency in people realizing how quickly we have to start and how quickly we have to get going in replacing this. Um, I, I think we have to close the gap between um, what the scientists do and how we, how we talk to people about climate change. So I, I think not enough people understand uh, where the knowledge that we have from climate change, about climate change comes from. So for example, being able to put models into people's hands in a way that they could play with and get a better sense. I think we lack, uh, um, most of us lack, an understanding of, of how the climate system works. And we lack an understanding of, of our impact upon it. Um, so I'd like to see us uh, spend more time doing hands-on science, giving everybody a chance to do hands-on science and get a much stronger sense uh, of how the system works um, and what we have to do to protect the planet. So we know that before you did more research with technology and um, maybe you could tell us a bit about that and why you switched your area of research a bit, like transitioned into more. Sure. So I've spent most of my career studying software and how it's built. I've studied commercial software, I've studied um, aeronautical software, I've studied um, how NASA builds flight control software for the space shuttle and the space station. And about six or seven years ago I was looking around for a new challenge and I was reading about climate change and realizing how much the science of, of climate change depends on these large computational models. And so I, I uh, got talking to a few uh, scientists at the University of Toronto and asked them about how they, how they work. And what, it, what I realized is that nobody had looked at these models as pieces of software. They'd looked at them from a scientific point of view, but they hadn't really looked at, at them um, as software or as an engineering challenge. You know, how do you build a simulation model for the whole of planet Earth um, and something that will run to simulate, let's say, a century's worth of climate. So that was fascinating. Um, so I, I, I changed my, uh, the focus of my research, partly because it was, it was interesting to me, but partly also because it seemed like an important problem that people weren't looking at it. Okay, so I think um, we talk a lot um, in climate change and in the negotiation process of the twin challenges of, of mitigation and adaptation. 
But I think there's a third challenge that's just as important, and that's education. I think we have to spend more time looking at how we educate people, um, how they learn climate science, how they learn the impacts of what we, uh, humanity as a species, does. Um, and that involves people having more opportunities to learn, learn the science, more opportunities to explore what climate models do, more opportunities to talk to, sci to climate scientists.